Glory to God. It is so good to be back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So good to be back. So great to see Brother Kevin and Sister Jennifer. Hallelujah. Healed. Hallelujah. Healed. Amen. So good to see you. Uh, before I forget, um, Pastor John and I came together and um, we're in agreement that next Wednesday, next Wednesday, Pastor John wants to um, lead as far as a group that if you all want to come here and meet to go out and visit people. Um, and that's going, to, that's going to be next Wednesday. Say it with me, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Now, to, to, to be in order with this, to be in order with this, I know, same with Pastor, that not everybody is either comfortable or on board with that. Listen, don't let the devil come in and start condemning you. Rebuke that. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. That devil has no right to speak to you, okay? Right. So, so to bless... Anyone who wants to stay and be in worship service, we're also going to have a worship service as well. And, um, but I, I thank God for pastor's obedience to start this. Man, I missed you, Elder Charlie. <laughs> it's so good to see your face, man. And um, so are we on the same page next Wednesday? Okay, next Wednesday. So um, Holy Spirit is going to give pastor as far as the destination, location. I'm not trying to wrap up here, but that's. Kind of what it sounds like. The destination locations. Yeah. And, um, and if you have somebody on your heart, please share with Pastor John or myself. And we'll make sure that that person is uh, going to be on the list. Amen? Are you all excited about that? Pastor, is there anything that you want to add, add to that? Is there anything you want to add to that, Pastor? Praise God. Oh, it's so good to be back. Hallelujah. Um, uh. I have to ask because we're just such a tight family, and you guys could see right through me, um, see right through Trish, and I'm not one to ever put a front at the pulpit or even consider lying. So I'm going to say this, and I just want it to be done. Uh, Trish and I, we just need your prayers. We had, a, we had the worst time. We had the worst time. And it's been, uh, it's been hard, and I... I can't even look at my wife right now because it's just been, it's been hard. Amen. Because too many people like to put up a front, right? Oh, everything's bled, everything, okay. But when you're hurting and you're struggling, it's, it's real, right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord. And Father, we thank you for our pastors, Lord God. Father, we thank you for his wife, Lord God. And Father God, you know what's going on in their lives right now, Lord Jesus. And Father, we lift them up to you, Lord God. And Father, we pray you just wrap your loving arms around them right now, Lord Jesus. Father, hold them close, Lord God. Father, I pray your Holy Spirit, Lord, will just run through their veins like never before, Lord. Father, I pray you go before them and make their pathway straight, Lord God. Father, give them peace, Lord God, of what's going on in their life, Lord God. Father, I pray you'll be with them each and every step of the way, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that whatever this situation is, Lord God, if it's not from you, Lord God, yes. that we rebuke it, Lord God, yes. in your Jesus' Hallelujah. name, Lord God. Yes. And Father, we put it right Thank back you, into hell where it belongs, Yes, yes Father. Father, we pray a hedge Thank of protection you, around them, Lord God. Yes. And Father, you will just engulf them, Lord God, with your angels, Lord God, yes. and surround them, Lord God, with your army, Lord yes. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in their lives, Lord God. And Father, we pray a hedge of protection and a blessing on them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Vacation, Lord God. 
one of joy, Lord God. That joy comes from you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. No more. No more. No more. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We trust in you, Lord. We trust in you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Reflection. Amen. Thank you, Brother PJ. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. That's the beauty about serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, I uh, just opened with, had, had no idea as far as with all that, and I thank you guys for your obedience, and whew, just feel Holy Spirit's anointing. Are you ready for a far? Amen. Amen. Are you ready for a far? Praise God. Let, let's get into worship. Hallelujah. What's up, Brother Brandon? How you doing? Praise God. So we're going to start in Matthew 27. We're going to be in there just for a couple verses. And um, the worship service this evening is titled Reflection. And this reflection is going to be about your value. Say with me, my value. It's going to be about your worth. Say with me, my worth. It's going to be about how much God loves you. Say with me, how much God loves me. And so we're going to open that way as far as just laying down the foundation we're going to spend a lot of time in 2 Corinthians 3.18. Now, I know many of you right now are looking at that going, well, Pastor, that's just one verse. But this is the way Holy Spirit wanted, and we just have to be obedient. I'm just so thankful. Amen. And we're going to close strong in Matthew again, going back 20 chapters in Matthew 7. And we're going to go straight from the mouth of Agape himself, Lord Jesus Christ, and the reason why he instructed so I love the way that Holy Spirit orchestrated and just divinely placed all this together because it starts with the reflection of our value in Christ, in who we are as beloved children of God. Praise God. It's such a blessing to see you, Sister Rocky. I thought that you'd be on vacation. Hallelujah. Friday. Praise God. Friday. And we go into the message that Holy Spirit carries onto the church. And, we're in, and in this case, we're going to go into the book of Corinth, Corinthians. And you're going to hear and see how this life of abundance is activated and how God is ministering to the church. And praise God how God is ministering to our church 
here. Hey, Sister Cassie. So great to see your smiling face. Praise God. Um, y'all, y'all just uh, bear with me. Amen. We miss you all. Like, like, like I'm just going to say it. We just miss you all so, so very much. Um, prayed for you all every day. And we just thank God that uh, I'm rooted in Holy Spirit's body. Amen. Amen. And just to be with, you know, beloved children of God. Praise God. So let's get started. Oh, thank you, Brother David. One person. I love that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Matthew 27, 50 says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded. Say it with me, yielded. yielded. He yielded up his spirit. I was just um, having fellowship, quick fellowship with Sister Michelle as she was um, going over some of the tech stuff. Pray for her because she's praying about being part of the tech team. And we need that help. Amen. So I'm just going to go ahead and put her on the schedule. I'm just kidding. Isn't that what we do, though, at church, right? Are you interested? Okay, I'll put you next week's schedule. You know? <laughs> Ryan should know. <laughs> and um, I, I love this word, yield, um, because we were just talking about this upstairs, and she said, you know, God's been moving in my heart. And she also said it down here about serving. And don't you love that? When you worship God Almighty, say that with me, worship. worship. Listen, now this is conviction now. And some of you are going to get upset. Don't get crunchy at me. Don't have that. Right? Don't, don't be like that. Let, let God flow through you. Amen? Amen? But when you worship a good, perfect father, you know yourself that when you worship Lord Jesus, you see what Lord Jesus has done, did, just so that he could save your soul. And as you're in his presence, you can't help but as a child of God, asking God, what more can I do for you? Can I get an amen? What more can I do for you? Hallelujah. Why don't we ask God that right now? What more can I do for you? Now get ready. God heard your voice. Hallelujah. See, the beauty is, is that when, listen, when I ask my wife, honey, is there anything I can do for you? Get ready. Get ready. And even as I say that, Holy Spirit's like, you better mean it when you say this, because my beloved daughter is going to be all over you like stink. Right? I mean, she will be all over. And sure enough, what can I do for you? Well, honey, can you go ahead and get the Swiffer? After you get the Swiffer, can you move this, because we need to clean up behind that. When we clean up behind that, go ahead and get the bleach, because this is nasty over here. We need to clean it. I was just going to take the trash out. Right? <laughs> But you look at this picture, and of course, as you know, Lord Jesus Christ cried out again with a loud voice. I want, you, I want to emphasize this cry to you. This is a cry from a son that for the first time he was separated with his father. I pray in Jesus' name that this cry will echo in your heart and in your mind for all of eternity. Because I'll tell you right now, it is this cry... That helped me through last week. It is this cry that helped me forgive people who I did not want to forgive. It was this cry for me to rebuke sickness and say, get up. Because as long as I have breath, I have, I have time to serve my Lord Jesus. Gang and amen. It is this cry. And it's up to you. It's up to you to know this cry from our Lord. That here he is in all of eternity, God Almighty, hanging there, crying out. No longer to Abba, Father, crying out to God. You're not even my daddy anymore because you're not here. God, why? God Almighty went through this for you and I. And so the reason why this is so important for us to hold on to, Brother William, is this. This world will give you stuff that you're going to cry out to God and go, why, why? But this cry right here, Lord Jesus Christ, has to be the, the number one cry. Because no matter how hard we cry to God and go, why did you allow this? Why did this have to happen? Why is this going on? Why am I being tested? Guess what? None of that matters because of this cry. Amen? This cry. 
And I love that word, yielded. You know, when that sign is on the street that says yield, does that sign yield force me to stop? Honestly, does a red light force you to stop? Nothing can force you, right? A red light is a signal that you best stop because if you don't, you're going to get it, right? You're going to get God, right? Well, the same thing applies for yield. When you see that yield sign, you don't just whoop, right? Like in Danville going to Walmart. You know, you all know where I'm talking about in that intersection right there. Nobody looks anymore, right? Just, they just swoop right in, right? But that yield supposed to be you approach with caution. And if there's no vehicles, right? But I love this word yield here where Lord Jesus said, I yield my spirit. I give Holy Spirit back to the Father. You see, a lot of people question this. A lot of theologians like to just make it all complicated and messed up. The truth of the matter is, he's God Almighty. He could have kept spirit on him the whole time. But he said, it's time. And he yielded up his spirit. So what happened? What happened when he yielded his spirit? We're going to go to the next verse. Then behold. Say this with me, behold. behold. We got to go fairly fast, but I don't want to rush Holy Spirit. When the Bible says behold, that means your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body is completely sold out. Say with me, behold. behold. And look at this. It says, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn. Oh, hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. The, the veil. So here Lord Jesus Christ cries out to God and he yields up Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit signifying the perfect work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The perfect work of the Redeemer himself, the perfect blood that was spilled on Calvary's cross for you and me. Holy Spirit said, it is finished, and Holy Spirit ripped that veil in half from the top to the bottom. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo, hallelujah. From top to bottom, the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And this leads us into 2 Corinthians 3.18, where we're headed. Check this out. 2 Corinthians 3.18. So now we made a transition. We made the reflection of your value and how much God loves you. And you get to see the Father had to let go. <laughs> the Father had to let go. Do you think that's easy for Father God? God Almighty. As his son is just barely breathing, drowning on his own blood. You know, hallelujah, you know. Oh my goodness, come on now. We are open arms community church, Holy Spirit's church. You know we would all be on clouds going, just say the word, Father. Just say the word. We'll go down there and we'll, we'll swoop that world. Right? With the Clorox wipe. Just whoop. With the Clorox wipe. <laughs> Lord, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I love Clorox wipes. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, this is what it starts off with. But we all with unveiled faces. So my question to you, beloved family, are you, are you the all that God is speaking of right now? Huh? Is this you? That you don't have a veil over your face? Amen. Amen. That there's no veil separating you and almighty God? Amen. You see, before Christ, there was that veil. That's why Holy Spirit got, it done, got rid of it, right? Amen. See, before the Lord Jesus, there was this veil. And there was only cer certain select that can be in the presence. But there was only one on that day of atonement that was allowed to go in there. Right? And here come Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, no longer. You're going to have access to my Father 24-7. Hallelujah. And if you want, <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, and it, just, it gets gooder and gooder. Because what gets gooder and gooder than 24-7? Gooder and gooder is, not only is the veil torn, if you would allow me, I will live in you. Oh, hallelujah. And that's who you are. Hallelujah. So when we talk about us being unveiled face, this is the new covenant church now. Right? This is a new covenant church that I'm covered by the blood, that I am purchased, I'm no longer my own, 
that my God gave me my identity through Christ. This is my reflection. And I love it because at this moment, putting this together today, Holy Spirit says, you remember in some of the weddings you did where the bride would wear a veil? Moments like this, you guys worry me. <laughs> when the bride would come down, right? And just, right? Is it just me or are you? I know we don't do it now, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Here, let me help you out. But don't you love it? But don't you love it? Don't you love this part? That that veil stays on until they say, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. And what does that, what does that, what does that husband do? Just, he lifts up. Hey, honey, come here. I, I don't want to be the bride and the groom. Can you please come here? We don't, we don't got a bunch of time. You like watching? <laughs> you may now. <laughs> right? 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 <laughs> so, so the pastor, right? Pastor John would say, so Pastor John would say, I now pronounce you man and wife. Right? Pastor said, whatever, just go, right, right? And then now, go ahead. Pastor said, go ahead, right? And so I lift up, right? You remove the veil, and now that signifies we are man and wife. Amen? Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what I get. That's what I get. Right? And, and, and the glory of God is, is, is that. The glory of God is that. That's how perfect our Lord Jesus is. Amen? And that's the, that's the completion of what Lord Jesus Christ did on that cross. Hallelujah. And then, of course, you, don't you love it that here they are just the, together for, forever. Praise God. So let's move on. Beholding as in a mirror. Everybody, what we discussed earlier as far as beholding, what Holy Spirit wants to ingrain in our hearts so that we forever remember, is when you behold, you are sold out. There is no doubt. Right? Listen, the four wows of prayer that Holy Spirit taught this past Sunday, I'm still blown away. Amen? Amen? Because when you truly examine as far as those four wows, you know, believe. Get in the Word. Show the fruit of the Spirit, right? Right? Show the fruit of the Spirit and ask. Amen? Those four, right? Look, look, at, the, look at the divine order in what pastor, I know he's a mouthpiece, but Holy Spirit preached through pastor. Amen? Right? Believe. Can you say that with me? Believe. Believe. Get in the word. Say it with me. Get in the word. Get in the word. Number three, show the, the show the fruits of the spirit. And number four, ask, right? Here's the divine order of God. Believe in the Father. Lord Jesus Christ is the word. Holy Spirit is the fruit. And just ask God for help. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, pastor. Hallelujah. We got, we're, we're, we're one for eternity. Amen. We're one. <laughs> Amen? So listen, beholding as in a mirror, how many of you, when you look in the mirror, you go, that's not what I look like. <laughs> Come on, brother DJ, right? That's, no, nah, that's not what I look like. I know it sounds silly and even borderline stupid, but sometimes Holy Spirit teaches me this way. And he's telling me, he's charging me to speak to you this way. Because when you look in this mirror at your reflection, there is no doubt that's what you look like. Can I get an amen? Praise God. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Behold the veil of the temple. Look at this, how it lines up with what Lord Jesus Christ did on that cross. And now what was being taught through the apostle Paul from the anointing of Holy Spirit speaking to the church of today. This case, Open Arms Community Church. Listen, beloved family. You are a beloved child of God anointed in all of your ways. Listen to what Holy Spirit is teaching you right now. With unveiled face, meaning I am purchased by the blood of Lord Jesus. I am never going to go to hell. Amen. I am covered. I am covered. The Holy Spirit lives in me. Hallelujah. I have the power. I have the power in me. Then no matter what comes my way, beholding as in a face in a mirror, check this out, the glory of the Lord. So this is what Holy Spirit has real quick. Beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. This is when Lord Jesus Christ had the encounter, right, with the woman at the well. Ooh, define that encounter, amen? What about next? The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, right? Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. 
How about the man, the lame man by the pool, right? Everybody kept beating him, right? Look at that encounter. How about this one? The adulteress. Ready about to be stoned to death. Until not too long ago, there's many of us sitting here in God's holy house that would have thrown the stone. But by the grace of God, because you're born again, because your identity is in Christ, we know now, I'm not touching the stone. Amen. Amen. The rock lives inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The rock lives inside of me. Amen. So when you behold in the mirror the glory of the Lord, I love this. You see this in, in, in mirrors. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Right, Brother William? And then, of course, you know what's coming, right? He's closer. Say it with me, reflection. So as, as a mirror, the glory of the Lord, with unveiled faces beholding my identity, beholding my identity in Christ, beholding the glory. The glory. We did this study years ago, that, that Greek word's doxa, D-O-X-A, doxa. What does that mean? It's God's view and opinion of you. What is God's view? Don't you love it that that's how intimate and personal our God is? God said, enough of somebody telling you. Enough of a preacher. Come on now, enough of a pastor telling you. Here's my gift to you. And my gift is going to do the unthinkable, unimaginable. Go through excruciating pain for you. Just so you can see how much I love you. But then on top of that, when he raises again on that third day, that same resurrection power will live inside of you if you allow me. And God says, I will teach you. Hallelujah. God says, I will teach you my glory. What is this glory? That God loves you. Say with me, God loves me. Say with me, God is for me. Say with me, God saved me. Once again, beloved family, just as I confessed to you when we opened up this evening, you can go through hell. You can, lose, you can lose loved ones. That for, it, it appears that the sickness got the best of them. But I am here to tell you, until I'm raptured out of here, until my very last breath, that that sickness did not take them. Because their very last breath, their next one is with the Lord. And that's how we are saved. Amen. Say with me, I am, saved. I am saved. When you say I am saved, you know my breath is eternal. You see, there's a lot right now that are angry and mad at God because they're like, why did, why did God allow this sickness to take my child away, my husband away, my wife away, right? Why did God allow this? The only answer there is for all of eternity is God allowed Jesus to die on that cross for you and for me. Amen. Remember, say it with me, that's the greatest cry. That's the greatest cry. I love this little picture here because this is it. We are being transformed into the same glory to, say it with me, glory. glory. Hallelujah. And this is the spirit of the Lord and how he works in our hearts. You see, in the pictures that God has shown you through all the walks of Lord Jesus, there's many, many more. The Bible says that if they recorded everything Lord Jesus did, Sister Ashley, there, there would be no room for all the books. Ain't that amazing how good our God is, praise God? I mean, you, 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 cannot, you cannot record it. There's just so much he did, right? But by the grace of God, we have this holy Bible breathed from Holy Spirit into beloved children of God that documented and wrote it everything down, right? And we have this relationship with the Lord, and we know because when we give thanks to God, and we thank God for Lord Jesus, that's the only way you can have this relationship now. Many people tell me, oh, you know, I believe in God, but I, I, I'm a good person and all that. No. Beloved, you have to be bold. Tell your loved ones, tell a stranger. No. That's not God, that's the devil. The only way you serve God is through the way that he made. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. So we're going to close on this. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye 
and pay no attention to the telephone pole that's in your own eye. Listen, this is a strong rebuke, but it is the greatest revelation. And Holy Spirit right now is trying to make it as clear as he possibly can to all this world right now. And it goes on right here. How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time there is that plank in your own eye? This is the condition we live in now. I have people wanting to meet with me already, wanting to meet with me, complaining about somebody else. Not wanting to come to church because this leader did this or that leader did this. Get over it. Can I get an amen? amen? My goodness. Are you kidding me? Are you going to allow that offense to drag you to hell? Or did what Lord Jesus Christ do on the cross, is that enough? Hallelujah. Listen, there's many of you right now saying yes. There's some of you quiet because maybe Holy Spirit is, is convicting you. This unforgiveness has to stop. It has to stop. My goodness. Are you truly going to stand before God Almighty and he knows every thought, he knows every tear, he already knows why you're shaking because he knows your heart? Are you really going to say, well, God, you just don't know how bad they hurt me. And then all of a sudden, in a flash, in a vapor, in a twinkle, Lord Jesus, he's right there in front of you and you could, you could just see the scars on his head. Family, please. See, I don't know your heart. But I know that you're pressing in. And I know you're worshiping. Amen. But listen, this world right now is conditioned to worship the way we want. Like Burger King. It's the way I want it. It's the way I want to worship God. I like this music. I don't like that music. So I only want this way. I like this preacher. I don't like that preacher. What is wrong? Because he is the same God. And what God is asking us, asking all of us, is will you just worship me? Will you look through the person speaking? They're just a mouthpiece. Amen? Listen, we go through no man. We go through no woman. We only go through Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get amen? You hypocrite first, take the plank out of your own eye. Remember we said beholding as in the mirror? How many of you ever had something in your eye? I always get like lashes in my eye, right? Sometimes I walk through the house or I'm sitting there and I'm doing this, right? And it finally gets to the point, well, let, Holy Spirit said just finish with this and I'll tell you. And then you will see clearly, and this is the glory of God, to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Remove yours first and then you'll see clearly. And this is the glory of God manifesting right now in his church body here at Open Arms Community Church. Amen. Amen. Say, call his name Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The way you pull that speck out of your eye, that telephone pull out of your eye, many of us know you have to look in that mirror. And I just showed this young man looking in this mirror because he's beholding and he's looking. But as you look at Christ this way, when you behold who he is and how much God loves you, when you behold that Jesus Christ is Lord and that Holy Spirit lives inside of you, God shows his glory that his view and opinion of you is that you are his for eternity. He'll never let you go. He cares about everything going on in your life. And if you allow him, he will move in your future. Amen. When you manifest this, this is what happens. The transfer takes place from glory. Say it with me, from glory, glory. to glory. glory. In closing, really had fun doing this last part here. When a beloved child looks in the mirror, and this could be you, don't be crunchy if, the, if your picture's not up here, but I just selected a few of what I got on my computer. But when Brother David looks in the mirror, there's Brother William, 
There's Brother Charlie Brown. There's Brother Joey Brady. Amen. I want you to look closely at this. Can somebody get the light for me, please? Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. You know, we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulation. But God says, rejoice. Right? God says, I know how much you hurt. But the pain that you feel is not like the pain of this world. Because your goodbyes is not goodbyes that see you later. Amen? On this same note, as you press in tonight to worship God, I want you to get the full manifestation of His glory. How do I do this, Brother Joy? Well, look at these pictures on the screen. When you have these brothers looking in the screen in the mirror, this is what I pray, because you don't know what they're all going through. You don't know what kind of pains they're going through. You don't know what their bank accounts look like. You don't know what their work schedule is. You don't know what their home life is. You don't know about their relationship with their wives. You don't know about their children. You don't know about what's going on. You don't know about their health. You don't know about anything. But what I pray, and I pray for all of Open Arms Community Church, I pray for this community and our nation, that we start looking into the soul of agape. And this is what happens when you start looking into the soul. And this is the glory. This is the glory of God that He wants for you and me. That when you see yourself in the mirror, don't you dare speak curses on yourself. Don't you dare look at yourself with condemning eyes. That's the devil. You rebuke that and you look in the mirror and you say, Father, I thank you that you made a masterpiece. And in this masterpiece, I will do a mighty work. Hallelujah, I will do a mighty work. I'm going to glorify you, Lord. I'm going to bless you, Lord. I'm going to bring glory to your name. Hallelujah. This is up to you. Are you ready to receive all of God's glory? Are you ready to, to, to just leave everything at the altar? Are you ready for Holy Spirit to move through you like never before? Amen. Remember, there's many of you right now saying yes. There's many of you right now that's already in that transition mode. You already stepped. Listen, the beauty is you already got one foot on the water and the other one's in the boat. Right? Right? And you feel the difference. Amen. You feel the difference. You're like, oh, dang, my toes just got wet. Right? Oh, there was a little wave. But God is saying, leave the boat behind. Amen. Leave the boat. Listen, when I rode to America, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is this, is that when you step, you take that step. Amen. Will you take that step for the Lord? Amen. I encourage you to. Praise God.